everyone welcome back to my channel and Merry Christmas today I have um, a video for you um, how to decorate a Christmas tree in a small space this is um, well kind of a requested video but I thought I'd share it with you um, this video is basically to give you inspiration to encourage you that you can decorate and have a fabulous Christmas tree in your space with very little room. You do not need a lot of room and you do not need a lot of money. This is just simple, easy, affordable, and on a budget, and you can do this. So hopefully I inspire you to create a beautiful Christmas tree this season. So right now, the Christmas tree I have, this is my um, main living room, and it's not very big. I mean, really, it really is not a big room. I would say it's probably... Um, the length of it's long, so I would say this is about maybe 20 feet, and then the width of it is probably be between 10 and 11 feet, so it's not very big um, as far as this being my main living space. So I didn't want a huge Christmas tree to take up the space because obviously if you've been following me for a long time, I have these uh, large shelving unit that I house a lot of my vintage finds, I decorate for Christmas and the seasons and our TVs on it. And then I have a coffee table that I'm actually sitting on. And then I have a couch with two lazy boy chairs. So if you've been following me, you kind of know what's been going on in here. And then also to um, create a more wide open space, I had to repaint the room a more of a neutral color um, just to make it more open and airy with a family of four. So the Christmas tree I have, I bought it a few years ago, and it's a pencil tree. This is probably about, I would say, uh, standing up next to it. Let me see. It's taller than me, but I do have it boosted in a crock. So that's my tip number one is to create the illusion of a larger Christmas tree is to lift it up off the ground. And then get creative with what you house it in. So I have it housed in a crack right here. So that's probably given about a foot and a half to two feet. So I would say this is right now at eight feet. So it's about under six feet by itself, but the crack helps illuminate it. And then this is a pre-lit tree. So this is why this video is coming out a little later than I would have liked it to come out. Because with a pre-lit tree um, takes, if one bulb is out, the, all the bulbs are out in the tree. So just me doing trial and error and trying to figure out which bulb it was took me some time and a lot of patience. So I figured that out. Um, there are a few bulbs that are still out, but the tree still illuminates um, beautifully. So that's like the, the first tip is to give it some height. And then I'm actually taking the sprigs. This is a faux tree and um, I'm going in opposite directions before I even string anything on the tree. Now, if you like a real tree, and I've had real trees in the past, you just look for the tallest tree that you can fit in your space, depending on your ceiling height, and then you look for the skinniest tree. So you can actually put it in the space so it's not too full around. Now, I do have a wider tree in my other room, which is great because it's a sitting room. Um, but this room, I mean, when family gathers around the season, everybody's in here and whatnot. So we open presents, we visit, we have coffee, we have dessert and all that. So I'm fluffing the tree and doing all that. And then I'm going to show you the lights here. So that would be your next thing is to get your lights out. Now, if your tree is not pre-lit, you're going to start showing you from the top and all the way down. And um, then you're going to put your tree topper on last, I would recommend. However, for this video, I'm putting it on first because that was the first thing that came out and I already put it up. But I recommend putting it up last. It's just like a little traditional thing. I mean, really, honestly, you can hang it up first or last, depending on if you're using a bow. So you don't have to use an angel. Some people like to do the angel and put it up last. And sometimes it's the oldest person in the family that puts it up. Sometimes it's the youngest person in the family. So let me know what you guys do for your tradition for your tree toppers. I don't really think there's a rule. But I think if it's going to be a part of the decor and you want to kind of base it off the tree top, maybe put that up first. Okay, as you can see, my tree's lit and it's pretty pretty um, lit from top to bottom. The next thing is to place your Christmas tree that's gonna take notice in the space. So our front door is just right over there and when you walk in, you literally see this tree in this corner. 
And I think it's so inviting and magical when you see the Christmas tree from maybe a window that leads to the outdoors. Everybody can kind of um, see it from the outdoors when they're driving by. Or, when, or also too when they walk into your home. So think placement for that too. You don't want it kind of tucked away where no one's really gonna see it unless they're all the way in the door and maybe in the kitchen or down the hall or whatnot. So make sure you place it in your home that's inviting, that is the first thing you see when you come into the home or even when you walk up to your home. So um, think that when you're placing your Christmas tree. The next thing is color scheme. Color scheme is very important, especially if you're working in a spa space, because sometimes things with too much color can look very cluttery. Um, I try to keep with neutrals here in this space, just because, like I said, the space is very small. Um, but this year I'm going with like a blue and white and more rustic, earthier look for this tree, because this is our main living area. I don't want anything overpowering that's going to take up from the space and the other decor because I try to incorporate the decor around my um, existing space. I don't want to add a, a, a color that doesn't really blend in with the area. So that's why I try to keep everything as neutral as possible. And then maybe if I want to add pops of color, I can. So in my other room in my Christmas tree, an example is everything's red and white with maybe gold and silver. So it's very reflective and it looks like there's a lot going on on the tree, but there really isn't. That room doesn't really have any color in there. So the red and white is traditional for the season and it's beautiful and it's classic. And I had a lot of red and white ornaments that I wanted to incorporate over there. So over here, I wanted it to be more of that farmhouse look, that country look. Um, and I wanted the color scheme um, to be more earthy and rustic. So I thought blue and white would work well, maybe adding little touches of gold and green and browns too as well. Okay, my next tip is once you figured out the color scheme, you have your lights strong, um, finding inexpensive ornaments to decorate that look nice is a challenge. I do understand that, but um, I would right now go to your secondhand shops, um, thrift stores, and find any type of ornament that would go with your color scheme. These blue ones and white ones I found literally at a thrift store. Um, some of these ornaments I've accumulated through the years that I'm going to add to this blue and white theme. Um, so if you have like someone who's in a profession that has like a color scheme, you can, um, get ornaments like that or, um, you know, or a sports, like we have the Detroit Lions that are blue and silver here in Michigan. So that's a great color scheme. Well, those are great colors to add to the color scheme. And then um, you usually get, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I usually get ornaments for um, Christmas gifts and things like that, or hostesses gifts. So um, hopefully if they know that you post it, or maybe you posted the colors of your tree, or um, they know your color schemes, they'll get colors that are in the scheme. Another thing is don't hesitate in um, decorating with, items you have around the house, such as pine cones, acorns, cinnamon sticks, dried fruit. I actually have dried fruit that I um, stored in a brown paper bag. Last year, I dried this fruit. Um, if you wanna know more about that, I'll put it in the cards and I'll also link it below and it's, uh, there's a blog post for it. But um, I stored this in a brown paper bag for a year and it held up really well. And then I str uh, strung twine through it. You can hang that on your tree too for that more neutral look um, for your Christmas tree. And then just placing it on there, stepping away, looking at it again. White is a neutral color, so white's always good. And then um, just adding where you there's bare spots. Uh, a little goes a long way when you're decorating. So... Don't be afraid to, like I said, shop those secondhand stores um, and whatnot. Like here's an example, blue blue and white, and it's the Detroit Lions. We're gonna add it to the tree because it goes in the color scheme and it just looks wonderful. And then another tip too, when my kids were smaller, you know, they wanna just put it all over the place and go to town, right? Um, I usually gave them like, a box and then I put like three or four ornaments in it and then I had them put it on the tree and then we stepped back and we looked at it and then I said gave them three or four more and I said go on that side of the tree and do that 
three or four more go up if I have a taller child to do the top and whatnot. Um, I kind of worked on the top and then they were in charge of like everything that was their height. So, and then they would work around the trees. So don't give them the whole box, like just have them pick out three or four ornaments and then start decorating with those and then three or four more after they decorate with those and they're placed really nicely. So that's a nice tip when you incorporate children with decorating. <clears throat> okay, so the correct order, I guess, to, I guess my correct order, and then you can do it pretty much any way you want. I mean, there really is no correct order in decorating, but is to make sure you string those, well, fluff the tree, string the lights, add the garland if you're doing garland, then add your bolt, and then finish with your sprigs and ribbon, and then your tree topper. So we pretty much have our garland or some type of, you know, beading I have right here, and then I'm adding the bulbs on, and then when I'm done, I'm going to fill in any of the gaps with um, sprigs. So I'm going to use uh, faux eucalyptus but you can use pretty much anything. The possibilities are endless. You know, I've, I've stressed that plenty of times. And um, and then I'm gonna use some ribbon this year. It's such an inexpensive way to make your tree look pretty and festive is ribbon. So yeah, we're gonna do that. So let's just finish up the bulbs right now and then we'll go to the next one. video gave you some inspiration. This was a difficult feat to say the least. This is why this video has taken me so long to get posted and upload it to you guys to inspire you. I had so many problems with decorating this year. I don't know if you guys are feeling the stress of it, but everything that could possibly go wrong during the Christmas season has gone wrong as far as this tree, I had to restring it. It was a pre-lit tree. I had to take all of the light. After I had it all decorated, I had to take it all apart to get to the lights and repair them and fix them. Then I have some outdoor lights that I was having problems with um, and some other decorating things that kind of slowed down. And here we are in the middle of um, December and I'm still decorating, but I wanted to get this video out to you to let you know, don't be discouraged. Um, I think the biggest thing I'm a takeaway that I've learned from this is just keep it simple and breathe. It doesn't need to be overboard. It doesn't need to be extreme. It doesn't need to be expensive. Um, and just use what you have um, around your home to find joy and peace Christmas together, the, the decor together during the holiday season. So I hope this video encourages you and inspired you to take a deep breath because I need it to, um, to decorate and make your home beautiful this season on a budget. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you. Give me a thumbs up if it did. Remember to hit that subscribe button. I'm hoping to get some more videos out to you and hopefully not run into any fender benders while preparing them. If there's any video requests, let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to also link the blog post in the description box so you can go over there and get it kind of if you're one of those visual people and need to see it visually um, and whatnot. And then let me, also I will um, either put in the cards, well, I'll put it in the cards too and the description box, some other inspirational videos for you. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you guys real soon. Merry Christmas.